Now we can turn back to Cain and import the hash file of one of our Windows victims. Okay, so where were we? We run a Cain in the Cracker tab. We click the LM and NTLM hashes on the tree at the left-hand side of the tool. Then we click the plus icon in the toolbar menu. And the add NT hashes from window appeared. And now we're in the importing hashes phase. The hash files are in my Kali, so I need to copy them into my Windows 8 VM to be able to use them in Kane. You can use WinSCP to transfer files from a Linux system to a Windows system. Now, I don't want to spend too much time with how to download and install WinSCP, so just Google it. It's very simple. My host is Kali222. WinSCP uses the SSH connection, so SSH service has to be alive in Kali. So let's go to Kali and check the SSH service. First, I want to check if the service is running, and no, it's not. Type service SSH start to start the SSH service. Type netstat tnlp to see the SSH port. And it's 22 by default, but I changed the config before, as you see, my SSH service is running on the port 443. Now, please don't forget to use your own SSH port, and it's probably the port 22. So, back to Windows 8. In WinSCP, set the SSH port, which is 443 for me. WinSCP tool, change the protocol according to the port, but my service is SCP not WebDAV, so I choose SCP again. Now, here's an important point. If you try to log in with WinSCP using root user, you may see the access denied message. That just means using SSH service with root user is denied in your Kali machine's SSH service configurations. In Kali, either change the SSH service config to be able to connect with root user or create a new user to use SSH connections. To create a new user in your Kali, you can use the add user or user add commands on the terminal screen, or user's interface of Kali to add a new user. I've already added a user before with the name SSH user for this purpose. Uh, you can add a similar user to your system if you want. So now I connect WinSCP using the SSH user credential. Well, you know, I forgot the password of the user. Sorry about that. So I'll go to Kali and type password SSH user to change its password and hit enter. Now, because I'm currently the root user, which is the most powerful user, I'm allowed to change another user's password. So now I enter the new password, retype it, and the password is updated. So now I can turn back to WinSCP and connect to Kali to transfer hash files. Well, I'd like to do one more thing in Kali. So I'll copy the hash files inside the home folder of the SSH user, which is the user I use to connect with the WinSCP. But why am I doing this? Because this user is not a power user, so it cannot access the desktop folder of the root user. Anyway, I copy the hash files into the home folder if SSH user using CP Linux command. So now in WinSCP window, I'll refresh the Kali side. We're in the home folder of SSH user, and here are the hash files. So I'll copy it onto the desktop of Windows 8 VM, and there we go. We're finished with WinSCP, so I'll close it now. Now we're finally ready to import the hash file in Kane. I'll click the button next to the box and select the hash file we copied to the desktop seconds ago. Let's choose XP hashes for this example. So we imported hashes from a text file, and now's the time to crack the passwords. After selecting the hash file, we can click Next to jump to the next step, and Kane gets the rows from the file and creates this table. As you see, there are the users, and there are the users' passwords, LM and NTLM hashes. 
Select one of them. Uh, I'll choose Administrator. Right-click on the line under Dictionary Tech, select NTLM Hashes. So we are in the Dictionary Tech windows now. Dictionary list is empty at the moment, so we have to choose at least one dictionary to perform an attack. Right-click on the Dictionary table and select Add to List. Now we need a dictionary. Almost every tool has dictionaries by default. So I want to look at the Cane folder to see if there is any. Program Files x86, because Cane is a 32-bit application. Cane Word List. Here there's a wordlist.txt file. So let's look at its contents. And just a little tip here, I generally use Notepad++ in Windows systems, which is much more powerful than the original Notepad. If you try to open this file with Windows Notepad app, it may take a few minutes to open the file because it's a really big one. So right-click and select Edit with Notepad++. This is the word list. If you look at the bottom of the notepad, you'll see that the file has almost three and a half million lines. Okay, so I want to look at the word 1234QQQ uppercase Q, which is the password of the administrator user. The word list does not contain this word. If we start the attack with this dictionary, we're just going to fail. So I want to show you a successful attack, so therefore I'll just add the word here. So let me go down a bit because I want to show the speed of the tries as well, uh, somewhere here. So I'll add the word, save the file, and close. Now in Kane, I'll add the wordlist.txt file as a dictionary. Now here there are some options. Most of the password cracking tools, including Kane, have these kinds of options. Password cracking tools do not just use words as they are, they are also able to use the words in various forms. Reverse, double, lowercase, uppercase, adding number behind the words, etc. So we add the dictionary, select the options, and we're ready to launch the attack by clicking the Start button. And now the cracking starts. As you can see in the Key Rate field, Kane tries more than 2 million passwords a second. Now there are 3.5 million passwords to try, but don't forget the options selected. Every word is tried as is. Reverse, double, numbers added, etc. So there are tens of tries for a single line of the word list. And here it is. Kane found the password from the hash in seconds. Well done, Kane. So in the table, the cracked password values are set by Kane. And do you see the LM password? It's all uppercase. So let's try another user. I really don't know the password of this user. So right click. Dictionary attack, NTLM hashes, same dictionary, and start. It makes more than 2 million tries per second this time. And the attack's finished. But we failed this time. Um, we couldn't find the password with this small of a dictionary.